Greetings demigods, monsters, and gods alike. Welcome to the Olympus Report. Sometimes we're just too busy to sit down and read a book, but thankfully we have audiobooks that we can listen to as we're doing other things in our daily lives. Audiobooks tend to bring a new dynamic to stories in a new and interesting way. But how does the Trials of Apollo audiobooks hold up? Well, here's everything you need to know. I don't think it's any secret that the Trials of Apollo are the least read books and generally the least favorite among the Percy Jackson fandom. And I feel this is because some of the books can drag slightly and are a bit hard to get through. Well, at least that's how I felt my first time through. But the audiobooks changed everything for me. I absolutely fell in love with these stories my second time through listening to them on audiobook. The Trials of Apollo audiobooks are all narrated by the same person. And if you've seen my previous reviews on the Percy Jackson audiobooks and the Kane Chronicle audiobooks, you know that I think this is super important for consistency. The five audiobooks are all read by Robbie Damon, who is actually a very popular voice actor. He's best known for Peter Parker in the new Marvel Spider-Man cartoon, Prompto in Final Fantasy XV, and my personal favorite, Murasaki Bara from Kuroko's Basketball. Plus many more. In fact, I actually had the pleasure of meeting Robbie Damon at an anime convention, and he could not have been nicer. Unfortunately, this was before I read The Trials of Apollo, so I couldn't talk to him about it. Robbie is definitely one of my favorite voice actors, and he is so talented. And that talent really shines in these audiobooks. He breathes life into these characters and is truly performing the book, not just reading it. His range, in my opinion, is probably the best from any narrator we've heard so far in the Riordan verse. I mean, just listen to this first clip here. I am Apollo, I announced. You mortals have three choices. Offer me tribute, flee, or be destroyed. I wanted my words to echo through the alley, shake the towers of New York and cause the skies to rain smoking ruin. None of that happened. On the word destroyed, my voice squeaked. I mean, his voice actually cracked. That's not easy to do on command. But besides that, you can hear in his performance the cockiness that Apollo has in the beginning of the series. But now, in contrast, listen to this clip from when Apollo is going to sacrifice himself in the burning maze. You would never. You don't have a self-sacrificing instinct in your body. Let them go. I press the arrow against my skin, hard enough to draw blood. Or you'll never be the sun god. It's almost like he's playing a completely different character here. You can hear the love and dedication that Apollo has for his friends in Robbie's performance. Apollo as a character grows throughout the five books, and so does Robbie's performance. But if that's not enough to convince you, listen to this scene of Jason's sacrifice. Jason met my eyes across the ruined throne room. His expression told me his plan with perfect clarity. Like me, he had decided that Piper McLean would not die tonight. For some reason, he had decided that I must live too. He yelled again. Go! Remember! I was slow, dumbstruck. Jason held my gaze a fraction of a second too long, perhaps to make sure that last word sank in. Remember, the promise he had extracted from me a million years ago this morning in his Pasadena dorm room. While Jason's back was turned, Caligula wheeled about. He threw his spear, driving its point between Jason's shoulder blades. Piper screamed. Jason stiffened, his blue eyes wide in shock. He slumped forward, wrapping his arms around Tempest's neck. His lips moved as if he was whispering something to his steed. Carry him away, I prayed, knowing that no god would listen. Please, just let Tempest get him to safety. Jason toppled from his steed. Can you hear that raw emotion? 
When I listened to this, I absolutely bawled. And I knew what was coming because I had read it before. But besides the more serious emotions and scenes, he also nails the funny ones just as well. He is hilarious to listen to and really nails Apollo's more ridiculous lines. GPS, Calypso asked. Godly positioning systems. Instead, they shoved past her, intent on stopping me before I could strum a chord. Everyone is a music critic. Killeth thyself with some other projectile knave of common murder weapons. I am none. Robbie's performance truly shines, but not only in the main characters, he does a great job with all the characters. Meg is the perfect amount of whiny. My alley, my rules. Her bossy nasal voice made her sound like she was chiding a playmate in a game of make-believe. And his emperors have a cool evilness to them that sends chills up your spine. Sire, you were about to relieve me of duty? By killing me? Oh, right. Well then, go sacrifice yourself. Prove you're more useful than that idiot father of yours. Honestly, Midas had the golden touch, and he still couldn't do anything right. But he also nails the bigger demons like Python and the creatures as well. Food! Screamed the one-armed ghoul. The only thing I wasn't fully on board with were the voices of characters that I had already come to know in previous audiobooks, like Leo. Guys, cool it. Leo patted the dragon's neck. Apollo, just try, will you? But it certainly doesn't mean that it is bad. It's just not what I was used to. Overall, these audiobooks are some of the best, and I think really breathe life into the trials of Apollo. If you're struggling to get through this series, I highly recommend picking up the audiobooks, because these stories are just too good not to have read them. Hopefully that answered all the questions or some of the doubts you had about the trials of Apollo audiobooks. Have you listened to them? What did you think of Robbie's performance? Let me know down in the comments below. But for right now, that's all I have for your Half-Blood, so I'll be signing off. And until next time, please remember to stay safe.